Psalm 34 of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away and he left. This is what David said. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glorify in the law, Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear will lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Um, I have no words in African uh, for you. Uh, I, I, I couldn't quite get the hang of the African language at all. So, and we had everything translated into a different language for us, which was great. But it's really good to be uh, back. But it was really good to be there. I had a fantastic time. Um, the last two weeks and it's just been um, well the, you always got to watch when someone goes away and has a very exciting time because they just can't help talk about it endlessly and it's fine once or twice isn't it but then after a while it gets a bit like a broken record and, and if I mention Africa every week for the next few weeks just bear with me it won't last forever but it, it really was very very significant in all kinds of ways I travelled um, by Ethiopian Airlines very, very um, good company. And uh, we landed in Addis Ababa, uh, which is a chaotic, noisy, uh, clashing, uh, very contrasting place where it seems to be held up by concrete and sticks and mud and just everything in between. Um, very, um, very noisy, no uh, traffic lights in Addis Ababa. Uh, there are a few roundabouts, but most of the time you just kind of go. A bit like you do when you're walking through Southmead and you just kind of want to walk across the one way to another and people are going up the other way. You just kind of go and you use your horn to let people know that you're just alongside them. So there's a, you can just imagine the buzz and the noise of that thing. Uh, I saw one moment when uh, there was a dual carriageway just outside the offices of Sendakau and a, uh, a van, a, a taxi with blue on it, uh, wanted to go on the other side of the road. There was a um, a concrete thing up the middle, there was a gap, he saw the gap, crossed the dual carriageway, went through the gap and then drove up the other side of the dual carriageway in the opposite direction to the vehicles coming towards him. Just hooting on the way, just saying, I'm here, it's okay, I'm here, I'm coming, and then pulled into the side. So it's the kind of place where George is driving would be absolutely fine, you know. But um, the people, incredibly warm, um, very generous in their 
in their res uh, response to us all the time. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm probably just a fraction too loud, I think. Uh, do you reckon? It's buzzing a little bit. Well done, Rach. Um, proud people, um, because the oldest skeleton in the world, um, Lucy. Do you know about Lucy? Do you know about Lucy? Yeah, she's, she's from Ethiopia. Um, the Garden of Eden, Eden, apparently in Ethiopia. Um, uh, the history of, of the church, a lot of it starts in Ethiopia. So in all kinds of ways, they, they kind of grade themselves pretty much up there. And um, it was just a shame that they lost to Nigeria yesterday in the football, but never mind. Um, we're going to look at this passage from uh, Psalm 34, and let's pray together. God, I pray that your spirit would use these words that I have, and the words that King David had... And I pray that your spirit would knit them together and help us to hear from you this morning. For the next 15, 20 minutes, I pray, Father, that, that we would connect emotionally with, with ourselves and also with how you feel for ourselves, for us, for each one of us. I thank you that you know every single thing about us, that there is nothing hidden, and even if we have put walls up against you, you can see behind them, you know the reality of our hearts. I thank you that you are full of love towards every single one of us and that you're here for us. And I pray that I would learn and that we would learn as a community how to trust you and how to find safety and security from you alone. I pray that you'd work among us as we as we chat and pray and listen together. Amen. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. One of the things that I have gained as a result of travelling across the world is the realisation that um, the relative wealth or poverty of your life uh, is not the most important thing uh, that will determine whether you express praise to God or not. Uh, how secure your wall is built, how solid your roof, how smart your clothes, does not determine your relationship to God or God's relationship with you. Uh, his availability to someone is not conditional on their relative wealth. The kingdom of God, the fullness of the kingdom of God, is as available to the poor as it is to the rich. The reality of God's presence, his life, his joy, his peace, his confidence, his energy, his spirit, you with me, is as available to the poorest of the poor, who I now have names for rather than just images in my head, as it is available for us. Blessing does not reside in wealth. Do you get me? That's, that's what I have discovered over the last uh, few days. And it's an amazing thing to discover because it means that it is available to all of us. It really is available to all of us. However wealthy we are, however physically fit we are, however intelligent we are, the grading of us that we do all the time, that means nothing, um, or at least it's not the, re not the um, it doesn't determine whether we are blessed or whether we can be blessed or whether we can experience the blessing of God. I travelled up one uh, hillside, and some of you will know because you've read it on the internet, that I met this woman called Endele. And Dele had been deserted by her husband, for whom the poverty had got too hard and the work too much effort, and he wanted a better life. So he'd walked down the mountain and gone to find a better life somewhere else. He'd left his two children with Ndele behind. Ndele was the, one of the poorest of the poor. I know that because she was one of the recipients of Sender Cow's um, project. She was included in a group uh, Sender Cow works by drawing people together into groups. 
And one of the things that, another thing that I have learned is that on our own, we are even more vulnerable. But together as a group, things happen. So they, this village uh, included in Delhi in a group, and they were encouraged to start a savings scheme and to, to talk about what they had together. Um, some of you will have read that the, the, the key question is not what do you need, the key question that they were asked was what do you have, what do you already have? If you'd have asked Ndele what do you need, she would have told you a list of things she needed. And you can imagine what they would be. She lives in a, in a very basic hut. Uh, uh, she is tired from the work of having to keep her family sorted and, and to feed them and to walk down the hill to go and get the, the, the water and then to walk up again. And she's literally uh, one notch above absolute poverty. Um, uh, she, she can feed her family, but she is only just there. And if you'd asked her what does she need, she would have given you a whole list of things. If we ask you what do you need, you'll give me a whole list of things. What do you currently need or want? The question is not what do you need, the question that they were asked was what do you have? And she was asked to think about what she had, and she had relative health. She has two children, she has a house, she has her hands, she has a plot of land. They started sharing their wealth together, and they did that. We had, uh, I should have brought it with me, uh, uh, a one burr, one burr was the smallest coinage. It wasn't a coin, it was a, a, it was a they don't deal in coins, they have um, notes. One burr is three pence. And they shared together, they started saving on a weekly basis around the group, 0.25 of a burr. 1p, less than 1p a week. We've got 0.25, so we'll share that together. And they started sharing that. And then they discovered that they could, they could do that. So they then doubled it to 0.5 of a burr. Started sharing that amongst them, around the group of 20 women. And then they decided that they could actually find one burr a week. And out of that little collection, as that grew from 10, 20, 30 pence to a pound. They bought some seeds. And out of those seeds, with encouragement and support, they were trained how to make the most of those seeds. So I visit several years on, and I find Endele with a kitchen garden that would even beat Chris Tatchell. with a range of vegetables that were unheard of in the land prior to the project coming. Uh, beetroot, uh, cabbages, uh, kale, Swiss chard, carrots, beans, peas. More vegetables than most of the kids in Twerton eat on a weekly basis. Nothing orange except for carrots. Beautiful, fantastic, rich, verdant land and yet most of it had been fed uh, by themselves, by their hard work, by their collective effort. An amazing transformation had happened on this hillside where they used to have one or possibly two crops, they now had maybe 10, 12. Beautiful transformation going on. And I, 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 I stood with Endelia, she was telling me, standing in her plot, taking photos of her, and I stood with her and and every time she mentioned how brilliant it was, she would give thanks to God. I will extol you at all times. I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God. The poorest of the poor have access to praise and joy as much as we do, if not more. Jesus said, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I have never understood it. Until, until I saw it, and felt it, and experienced the blessing that they had, the life that these guys had. 
the love that they shared, the joy that they experienced, the, the, the pleasure that they were sharing with each other was, was purer than many of the blessings that we experience in our, in our culture. Blessed are the poor. The blessing of God can come to the poorest of the poor. For these people are just a notch above starvation. Just one notch. Amazing. So here we are in, in, in our world. And what's going on in your head at the moment? Any anxieties? Any issues? Any insecurities? Uh, the talk today is about um, our longings for security. Um, if I drew a line across the front between secure and insecure, where would you put yourself? Would you put yourself at the secure end or would you put yourself at the insecure end? And you might like to think about that as economic security. Where are you? Economically very secure, economically very insecure. Have you got yourself lined up on, on the line somewhere? Yeah? Have you? Okay. Now do about emotional security. You emotionally secure, you feeling confident and, and proud and, and secure and safe? Or are you someone who is feeling insecure, defensive, anxious, worried? It is possible to have very little, it is possible to have very little and yet be completely safe. I have discovered, and the gift, this is the gift of um, the, the trip, really, to me, um, that in fact it is, it is possible to be even more safe and have nothing. Uh, one of the reflections that we had amongst us as a group was just how, how joyful the hillsides were, how peaceful they were, how communal they were, how equal they were, how familial they were, and how friendly they were. Um, and if you compare that to our world, it felt very different. Um, the, more, the more you have often, the more I have, the more locks and keys I have. Uh, the more insurances I take out, the, the more I worry about the stuff I have. Are you with me on this? And does this relate to you? Everything we have we are, we, gives us more things to be anxious about. So it tends, it, my experience of this last week is that, that these people who had nothing economically actually had an, a huge amount of security internally. And they had that because they had this faith in God. And I have to say that God was not a bit part of the story. He was right in the centre of every single thing, of every single person's life. And you can understand why, really. The two things that were much stronger here, um, there, than there, than there are here. One was the sense of community, and one was a sense of God being in the heart of everything. Uh, we didn't sit in rows once. We certainly never sat with walls around us, little miniature walls made of hard wood to protect us from each other. Except for one occasion, we sat in, in rows, we sat on benches, two and a half thousand of us, on church on Sunday morning, where the average age was about George's age, about 30. Perhaps younger. And each of those young men and young women had their Bibles in front of them uh, in Amar Amharic, which is the local language. And they were following all the way through. Uh, the worship went on for a similar amount of time as Mark led, and, and it, was done, it was done beautifully, and, and the joyfulness was, was amazing. Every other time, we, we stood in circles and we were one together. And there is something about the economic growth that seems to make, separate you, it seems to me, from your neighbour. That as we become secure in ourselves, we actually become less dependent on, on the person next to us. Do you, do you notice that? And we saw that, even in incremental ways, 
as farmers that had started off in collectives had become, as they had grown in confidence and wealth, began to become individuals and think of their farm and their cows rather than our land and our inheritance. It was really interesting to see the, the shift that goes on even at the smallest level. And of course, here we are in our own worlds and you don't know how much I earn. You don't know how I spend my money. You don't, you don't, you don't know me. I don't know you. We don't share our goods one with each other. If there is need among us, we don't share these problems and concerns very openly with each other. We, are, we don't expect to do this. We are individuals. So the question is, who's safer? Are we safer on our own without God? Or are the poor safer with God and together? I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glory, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. The poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of his troubles. For the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Um, I have discovered over the last uh, week or so that scripture is written from the perspective of the poorest of the poor. And when you uh, are immersed in this world, uh, everything becomes fresh and clear and uh, alive again. So here, are, here am I reading Psalm 34, and I'm not reading it like Richard used to read it. I'm reading it recognizing that this is the word of a poor man. This is... This resonates in a, in a world where it is very uncertain that the rains will come. It is not guaranteed that I'll have, I'll have a future in a year's time. That this, that this is written from the place of a, of a farmer. And when I read it from a place of a farmer up a hillside, I suddenly recognise that this is urgent, this is important. We, this is written from the place of someone who is desperate for God to intervene in their lives. And anxious for God to be part of every single aspect of their lives. And who needs to build their life on the rock because their life is very uncertain. And the difference between me and these people that I met is that I have many other places of which to get my security. My family is a place of security. My inheritance, my uh, education is a place of security. My, relatively, my relative wealth is a place of security. The fact that I've got the welfare state is a place of security. All kinds of other places of which to put my security other than my dependence on God. Now that might not be a bad thing, hear, hear me on this, it is not a bad thing to have all those things, is it? It can't be a bad thing. But what would it be like if I could have the security that comes from knowing and being in the centre of God's will all the time? Then it wouldn't matter whether I happen to have a lot or I happen to have not very much, which is where Paul ends up. Do you remember him saying that? I'm content with much and I'm content with little. What he had discovered was that poverty is not the place where blessing ends. In fact, po even in poverty you can discover security and blessing. And wealth is not a place where you discover blessing and security. In fact, in richness, in, in wealth and in riches, we can discover the opposite of security and blessing. Honestly, I, 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 uh, I don't think I've met more, more connected to God people. Which makes me think, how could we get more connected to God? How could we learn to, to rest more in God? We are relatively poor relative to the rest of our city. And we have a tendency to think that uh, we are dependent. We are, we are the poorer brother. We are the weakest. 
This is not the mindset of the people that I met. They had discovered that they were rich in Christ. They had everything they need. And I wonder whether as we look ahead to, the, to this huge scale of stuff that's going on around us, the things that we want to change and make different, whether we could begin to realise the wealth that we have within us. Do you know there is nowhere you need go to feel more safe than where you are right now? There is nowhere you need to go to feel more safe than where you are right now, that the security and blessing of God for your life right now, for a life without anxiety and, and, and with a sense of God's blessing on you is available to you right now where you are. You don't have to leave. You don't have to get a better job. You don't have to move house. You don't have to change everything. That, that the blessing of God, the kingdom of God is available to us right now. Does, does that resonate with you? Or do you think that you have to do something for the kingdom of God to come, for the blessing of God to come, for the security of God to come, for your heart to be changed? I think, I think we're caught up in our culture for looking for the blessing of God in all the wrong places. And it's available to the poorest of the poor. And if it's available to the poorest of the poor then it must be available for us here. It must be available for us here. So how should we access this security today? Uh, Anybody want to feel a little bit more secure in their life? (laughs) The answer is yes. All of us are looking for more security, aren't we? We have a drive for security. Our lives are driven by our anxieties. Yeah. So how do we access this security? Any thoughts going on in your head? How do we access the security that is available to us right here, right now? How how do we access this security? Pray. Okay, so what are, you, what are you thinking, George? What, what, what would that do? Okay, so, so George is suggesting that we, we connect with God through prayer and that we somehow let go of something. Right? Say that bit again. How, what do we let go of? I let go of all of those things that you, you say with my strength. It's security. Yeah. It's security. It's important, but to not think about Yeah, okay, good, thank you. you. So, letting go, trusting. Dave, you had your hand up. Yeah. So, by actually, do you hear him? By actually believing that Christ is right here by your side at all times. Okay, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this now. We're going to pray. We're going we're gonna to actively let go of some of the things that are on our minds and decide not to trust those things. We're going to imagine that Jesus really is by our sides right now, that he understands and knows everything that we are thinking and fearing and anxious about. And did you have any wisdom to share? Okay, so, so we had another letting go there, a, a letting go of your will and allowing his will to to become re- more real for you, or to let that shape your, your thinking. Okay, now my question, I think you're all right, you, you're, you are all three of you perfectly spot on, but I wonder whether we're able to do this today. I literally, I'm asking myself the question, am I really able to let go of my securities that I have in myself? And, allow, and trust God? Am I really able to pray to him like I really am depending on him? Am I really able to imagine that Jesus is with me? Or have I got my mind full of other things? Am I still anxious about donuts or what else is going on in the room? Rather than imagining my, myself as connected to Jesus, the source of all life, the creator of heaven and earth, right sitting next to me, who knows the inner workings of my heart. Am I really able to let go of my will and allow his will to shape my will rather than the other way around? 
Or am I thinking that if I sort this out, if I get this problem sorted in my own head, then it will be better, then I'll feel safer. You with me on this? I, I want to encourage us because because the kingdom of God is available to you and it costs you nothing other than letting go. <laughs> I mean, it's so free, it's so available to us that, that we would like it another way. We'd like to have to buy something or do something or, or make it happen. But it's so available to us that we can't access it sometimes. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's, it's available to us right now. Now, does anybody want to increase their level of security right now? Right now. I mean, I'm literally saying right now. I'm not talking about five minutes time or when you get home or later on this week. I mean, saying, would anyone like to move from a place of relative insecurity to relatively more secure place? Hands up. Anyone like to move from that place? Okay, so we've got some people who'd like to move. That's great. Others of you are still deciding whether you want to move or not. Or you're either that, or you're feeling so secure already that you don't need to move. I want to move. I have got anxieties. Haven't you? About children, about money about relationships, about this church. I've got shed loads of them. Haven't you? Yeah, loads of them. How are you feeling confident about those right now? Are you feeling, are you feeling secure? Are you feeling, or are you feeling like the wolf is coming to huff and puff and he'll blow the house down? Incidentally, that story makes more sense if all the houses are made of sticks and mud. And I think, I think we, have, we, have, we forget that this thing is really available to us right now. Shall we pray? Let's do it. Let's do it. Imagine the thing you're, you're most insecure about right now. I, I invite you to, to pray, so maybe to close your eyes, become aware of what is it in your head, in your heart, that is, that is an anxiety right now. Father God, open our eyes to see what it is that we're carrying around in us, that we are uncertain about, that we're insecure about. Help us to see, Lord, into our own hearts. You just want to ask yourself, what, what, am I, what am I worried about? What's, what's going on in me at the minute? And now take Dave's advice. Take Dave's advice and imagine that Jesus is sitting right next to you now and he knows exactly that thought and that anxiety. Feel the warmth of his presence alongside you in the reality of your insecurity. It may be a work issue, it may be a family issue, it may be a money issue. Allow Jesus to reassure you that there is nowhere you can go that he won't be with you. Now, now as you're beginning to imagine Jesus being right next to you, knowing your, your problem, Better than maybe than you even know it yourself. Now you might want to start praying to him. Telling him. Opening yourselves up to him. Something from within your heart. Or you might be hearing from Jesus a word or reassurance, encouragement from Jesus. Enter into dialogue with Jesus right now.
maybe a bit of your conversation will be about the right way forward about what to do and because you have heard today that the one of the best ways forward would be to allow God's will to shape your way forward and to let your will uh, be less prominent just agree with that sentiment and and invite the God of love to direct you and to give you an idea about what the next step is. Father, I pray that you'd put into our minds right now, as we sit here in this building, ideas about what it is we should be doing next with the things that we are most insecure about. If you've heard anything from God this morning in your, in your conversation with him right now, act on it. The wise man is someone who hears the word of God and then puts it into practice. The wise man is like a man who builds his house on the rock. And when the wind comes and the rain comes, it's, it will stand firm. So I encourage you to follow through on the, on the, on the decisions that you've, you've kind of already made. And to allow God's will to shape your future. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Father God, we rest in you and we pray that we would discover how to learn, to learn how to live our lives secure and at peace and content and safe in you. And just as a child comes up to his father, we pray that we would learn how to be children that trust you as our heavenly father we pray that you would lead us forward particularly with this this whole challenge we have with our building and as a church family to work out how how we should move forward we pray that you would give us the answers father for we know that you will resource us every step of the way We thank you that we live right in the centre of your heart. We live and rest in your hand and that there is nothing that can take us from you. Neither death nor power above nor powers beneath, neither death nor life, nothing can separate us from your love. We claim that to be true, Father. We rest in that love and we rest secure in you. Father God, thank you that there is nothing that we need fear because you are with us right at our side. We pray that you would plant in us that security that comes from the presence of your spirit. You would make us strong in you. Protect us with your armor, with your protective arms, with your your, your hands. May may we be protected from all the uh, fiery darts of the evil one. May we be protected from any doubt, any fear, any, any wound, Father. We pray that you would make us strong people so that we may dance and sing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, It would be great if um, if we wanted to journey with another person on this thing, 
If you feel you uh, have touched an insecurity in your life, uh, one of the steps that you may want to take is to share it with the person that you trust in this room or someone else in the church and to ask them to walk with you in it. Um, We are too isolated from each other. And Dele did not become strong by being on her own. She, She grew in strength by joining with her sisters. Yeah. Father, help us to share our needs and wants and desires with each other, our concerns, our worries, and to allow you to help, the, help us help one another as we grow together. Father, I pray you'd bind us together into a stronger unity, a stronger community together, that there may be no one in need among us. And may we find the blessing of God in the midst of our community together not as a group of individuals, but as a body connected to each other. Father, may your blessing rest on us, we pray. May the blessing of God go before us and behind us, hem us in on every side. May your face shine upon us. May you give us your peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Be with us and among us always. Amen.